Hello all. So I know it's been a while since I've done a video, but uh, well, life has been happening and uh, I really haven't had time to make videos. But I'm here now and I'm here with a Sonoff S20. Uh, I've seen lots of videos recently on the Sonoff and the, the Sonoff itself, the most basic one, uh, is just a little box with two screw terminals on either side and you put mains in and then you get switched mains out on the other side, but there's a Wi-Fi chip in it, an ESP8266. And that allows you to control it with this app called uh, Wii Remote or something. I don't, I don't remember what it's called. It's a, it's a Chinese app and uh, you know, it's okay. But the, the, real, sh the real great thing about these, these sawn off products is they're cheap. The basic one's only like $5, you know, shipped from China. And they're hackable. Since they're ESP8266 is inside, you can put your own firmware on it, and uh, and then the the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you would like with it. Now, my problem with these little uh, sawn offs is they're not very safe. Since they're just screw terminals, you have to sort of splice your own wires into them. This this guy's about nine dollars, and so it's a little bit more more expensive. Uh, still very cheap. And it's just like the regular Sonoff. It has a relay in it. It's got the ESP8266 in it. Uh, but this one's sort of packaged in a way that makes it a lot safer. And regarding safety, I just saw a video the other day. I forget who it was by, but I'll link it down in the description. And it shows the overcurrent test of the regular Sonoff. And while it's not catastrophic, it certainly doesn't cut out like you would hope when it goes overcurrent. Uh, so... I'll link that in down below and you can watch it if you're interested. Now, I've already taken this thing apart and I was pleasantly surprised and I think you will be too. So I'm going to go ahead and get into it here. Uh, and then hopefully my next video on this will be hacking it and I'm going to be putting some custom firmware on it. I'm not going to use their, uh, their firmware, whatever it's called. So let's see if I can get this open. There are some clips. If you're doing this yourself, all you need to do is pry up and you'll be able to get it open. Okay. Oh, it looks like I broke one of the clips, unfortunately, but that's okay, there's more. So, the button comes out and when you're putting this back in, the little eye hole on the button just goes right over this peg right here. So you can see there's a little peg, it goes on that one and that just keeps it oriented properly. So uh, th this is the circuit board itself, and I'm not going to be able to get this out because uh, these pins back here are soldered on to the board. I would have to desolder them. I'm not going to do that. So anyway, looking at this, um, yeah, we have some anti-tracking slots cut in the PCB, and they just go down uh, under that relay. I assume they're separating the high voltage side from the low voltage side. It's always good to see. Uh, I would really like to see the traces on the bottom side, but again, I'm not going to do that today. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's take a look at these capacitors. We have a 16 volt capacitor right here. So that must be uh, on the low voltage side, maybe a smoothing capacitor. We have over here some 400 volt capacitors and those must be on the input side so uh, yeah that's that's plenty of headroom even for 240 volts uh, so yeah what else oh yeah so the big the big thing that I like about this is there's a fuse here and that is so great it's compared to the regular sawn off the regular sawn off doesn't have any kind of fuse uh, I'm not going to spoil the test for you but uh, let's just say it doesn't cut out when it goes over current. This guy does have a little fuse here and it's soldered on so you're not going to be replacing it. But these things are so cheap it doesn't really matter anyway. Uh, and as for hackability you'll be able to see right here we have some serial connections so you can just take a USB to serial converter and hook it right on up to that and program to your heart's content. Uh, I'll be doing a video on that uh, right away, I'm going to be 
doing that later today, hopefully. So that will be out soon. Uh, so yeah, just a little look over this. Uh, I'm going to try to measure the power consumption, but with such low wattage, it's really hard to measure that. So it's probably not going to be accurate, but we'll give it a swing anyway. Why not? I uh, got a couple of LEDs up here. We have some more ceramic capacitors here. I'm not sure if these are class Y capacitors. I don't know how to tell, but yeah, it looks, it looks pretty interesting. looks pretty good. It looks uh, much better than the regular sawn off. Not that the regular sawn off is bad. And I think there's plenty of situations where it's perfectly fine, but this is just so much more practical. I mean, you can just plug something into it. You don't have to go like stripping wires and doing any of that nonsense. It just works and it's, it's safe. So yeah, stay tuned for the next video on this. Thanks for watching. All right, so quick addendum here. I wanted to add, uh, I wanted to show you how much power this uses. So I have here my Omni charge and this guy has a display on it uh, that shows the, uh, the power consumption. So this can output either AC, but it's going to be a modified sine wave, so it's it's not going to be very efficient for something that's rectifying it like this. So instead, I'm going to be outputting a high voltage DC output of about two about a sorry 150 volts DC. And so I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. So you can see that it's going about point point eight watts without anything without any load connected. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. And you can see it's on. 2.6 watts. So, uh, it's, you know, it's it's more than 0.3 watts. That's for sure. But it's less than. I don't I don't know what is that about one one and a half watts. So now let's turn on the relay. Be careful here. Turning on the relay, we're seeing uh, just about. 30 milli, uh, no, what is that? Uh, yeah, 300 milliwatts more. So, you know, it's not high power consumption, but <laughs> on the back here, they claim less than 0.3 watts. And that's, yeah, no, it's it's more than that. But, you know, it is, it is running Wi-Fi, so it's respectable. Okay, one final thing here. I wanted to look at the power factor. And the reason I didn't measure the wattage using this, by the way, is because this isn't uh, going to be as accurate as uh, this thing measuring it. So, But I, I will measure the power factor in here, and I'm not sure how accurate that's going to be, but I imagine it's not going to be very good. So unfortunately, this kind of covers the display, so I might need to read it to you. Yeah, it's looking like point oh, 0.2 power factor, turn the relay on. That'll probably help out the power factor a bit. Mm, yeah, point, point 0.45. Yeah, not great, but what can you do? A lot of us don't have to care about that, so yeah, no worries.